Hi, I'm Rani Haibi, CEO of Networking Edge and Access at the Linux Foundation. Today, I'm going to talk to you about how the metaverse is going to change the way we design and build our networks. So first of all, uh, let's talk about definitions and what the metaverse actually is. So while there are multiple definitions in existence, uh, it's clear that when we say metaverse, we usually mean uh, a, a convergence between the virtual and the physical world in some sort of way. And when we think about use cases, there are multiple different use cases. We are, of course, all familiar with the uh, immersive entertaining, entertainment 3D experiences, but the metaverse comes in many uh, different shapes and forms, and they can be categorized into various groups. So uh, taking, for example, the industrial group of use cases, um, you can imagine uh, XR-enabled workforces where uh, people get remote assistant using uh, VR or AR glasses to perform industrial tasks on the production floor. Um, things like performing predictive maintenance um, and, and remote control of uh, industrial equipment. Then when we look at the enterprise use cases, there are things like uh, immersive team collaboration and doing training and simulation with the either AR or VR, and of course, um, enhanced consumer engagement. Uh, then, of course, there are the consumer-related use cases like immersive gaming, but also things like uh, shopping and travel models that are implemented in the virtual world. So when we think about the effects of uh, metaverse on networks, we need to consider all these different types of uh, use cases. So what does the metaverse actually mean for network and edge computing? When we look at that technology stack that is required for implementing the metaverse, there are many different layers um, ranging from uh, the content layer, but going all the way down to the infrastructure uh, where we have highlighted here uh, the computational power, meaning how uh, compute power and especially edge computing will be required to implement the metaverse and also the communication and network and uh, how will they need to adapt for metaverse use cases and when we talk about networks uh, it's uh, many times these are mobile networks so we need to figure out how 5g and uh, in the near future 6g networks will have to uh, adapt and change to support the metaverse use cases So the metaverse presents several challenges for the network. So if you think about, for example, the round trip latency that is required to support live uh, single participant interactions, then that has to be, uh, according to research, no more than 10 milliseconds, uh, which means if you take into account consideration, physical consideration like the speed of light that the user, um, the distance between user and data center where processing is performed cannot exceed uh, something around 600 miles. Um, it also means that because of this uh, uh, constraint, uh, some of the processing or a lot of the processing actually will have to be carried out at edge locations and not on uh, a central cloud. Uh, it means that data and computing hungry algorithms will have to run on resources that are constrained in edge locations, either constrained by uh, power, real estate, network bandwidth, and so on. Uh, so that poses a new type of challenge. And when we think about AR and VR and also uh, haptic experience, uh, traffic has stringent constraints around rate the reliability and the latency. So in order to prevent disruptions for the end user, uh, we need to uh, be uh, provide a very um, a high quality of reliability and very low latency uh, for this, uh, these experiences. And then when you talk about real-time synchronization of the virtual and physical worlds, 
what happens a lot of times is that requires a symmetrical bandwidth capacity, meaning that uh, unlike most of the existing networking applications, which require much more bandwidth in the download channel, but not so much in the upload channel, uh, those uh, real-time synchronizations between the physical and virtual world actually require a lot of bandwidth uh, going from the end user to the network or the what is called the upload, uh, the uplink channel. And that for the first time poses a need uh, for uh, enhanced symmetrical capacity of the network. And when we look at those uh, many different requirements, they can actually be grouped into certain categories. So some groups of requirements stem from the immersive 3D, stem, uh, 3D streaming use cases. Uh, some sets of requirements are applicable for multi-sensory communication, meaning the visual, audible, and haptic uh, types of communication. Of course, there is there are requirements that are derived from the real-time aspects of the metaverse interactions, and there's uh, other sets of requirements that come from the, this need for seamless physical virtual synchronization and also the multi-dimension collaboration. If we look at different uh, use cases or services, as, as this table uh, shows here, we can see that those requirements for reliability, latency, data rate, and connection density, meaning how many devices per uh, unit of area, they tend to be different from use case to use case. So if you look at uh, virtual reality, for example, it can tolerate maybe something like seven to 15 milliseconds of latency and the expected data rate is around 250 megabits per second. But for tactile uh, interaction, um, the latency does need to not exceed one millisecond, although the data rate is slightly lower and maybe limited to something like one megabit. If you go all the way to experiences like uh, hologram education or hologram real-time communication, we can see that uh, the data rate or the bandwidth uh, goes to staggering amounts of bandwidth uh, in the area of terabits per second. So how does network and edge computing can be designed and evolve to address those, uh, those use cases? So in a desirable metaverse, which will be decentralized, um, it will maybe uh, be much like the internet uh, standards made it possible to connect uh, previously isolated communities. Uh, the open metaverse will need a uh, similar standard to allow metaverse personas and virtual property to persist across all the metaverse platforms. What it means actually is that we will see a paradigm of cloud edge and end device, meaning that computation or processing for metaverse use cases uh, will be carried out not in a single location, but over a continuum starting from the user end device, going through uh, edge locations and all the way to the centralized cloud. So for example, uh, local computation on edge devices can be used for least resource consuming tasks. For example, uh, computation required uh, by a physics engine to determine movement and position of an avatar. Then um, edge servers can be leveraged to perform some of the foreground rendering, which requires less graphical detail, but also requires a very low latency. And then uh, less time sensitive processing can still be carried out uh, at a central cloud location. Now, how is this um, enabled? Uh, what it means is that we will need to have tighter integration between the apps and the network. Um, so due to the stringent performance demands of the metaverse, uh, we cannot just simply throw more bandwidth at the problem and hope for the best. So if you think about uh, video streaming, for example, in this case, uh, if you just provide the uh, end device or application enough bandwidth, uh, the application doesn't need to interact much with the network and, and it can stream uh, the, the, and render the video stream to the end user. But when we talk about uh, 
metaverse applications, then just throwing more bandwidth is not enough and we need uh, tighter integration between the application and the network. What does it mean? It means that application, first of all, will need a way to get information from the network. So they should be able to ask the network how much bandwidth is available to me or to the device that I'm running on, or where is the nearest edge location that can serve me, that has the right resources and is close enough uh, to me to provide the necessary uh, latency and performance. In addition, apps will need a way to control the services that they get from the network, uh, doing things like requesting quality on demand that is guaranteed by some service level agreement. And also uh, application need a way to request assignment of edge resources for the applications that they're running. So this on-demand uh, secure and controlled exposure of the capabilities through APIs will pave the way uh, for transforming the operator network into a more of a service enablement platform. It will facilitate the application to network integration, and, and that will be key to delivering the metaverse era use cases. One project I wanted to mention is the Kamara open source initiatives uh, that deals exactly with this exposure of APIs for uh, applications. So, Modern networks, whether it's 4G or 5G, and in the future 6G, are very rich in capabilities, and many of these capabilities are exposed through APIs. However, these APIs tend to be rather complex and not designed for consumption by application or application developers. So there is a need to abstract uh, from the network APIs to service APIs that can be consumed by applications and to simplify the telco complexity and make these APIs easy to consume uh, by application developers in a manner that they are familiar with. Uh, there is also a need to provide these APIs in a secure and in a manner that follows data privacy and regulatory requirements. And if all that is done correctly, then uh, this will facilitate this desired application to network integration that is um, so important for many use cases, but especially for metaverse use cases. So the Kamara open source project focuses on exactly that, on creating that exposure gateway or exposure layer for network services that exist in the telco network and exposing them uh, to the consumers, which in this case are the metaverse app developers. So what are some of the use cases that are enabled through those APIs? So our first example is uh, remote surgery with the XR. Uh, in this example, um, a remote surgeon is interacting with a 3D model of an organ that is created by an imaging device that is located far away. And they can, uh, using uh, uh, this XR technology, they can manipulate and uh, uh, see the, uh, this uh, 3D image of the organ uh, being located many uh, miles away from the location of the patient. And they can uh, instruct the local team on how to perform the necessary uh, surgical procedures. So for this to work properly, we need to make sure that there is a uh, low latency and there are no uh, network disruptions. So there is a, a quality of service guaranteed for the duration of this remote uh, surgical procedure. So the quality on demand APIs that are available uh, through the Komar project are enabling this uh, reservation of the necessary network resources, making sure that uh, this procedure can be uh, carried out smoothly and without interruption. Interruption. So recently, Telefonica, Microsoft, and Apoclar uh, demonstrated how this use case can be uh, performed and uh, carried out. Another use case is uh, holographic calls or real, holographic real-time communication. Um, so again, in this case, there is a need to provide, uh, first of all, uh, low latency and high bandwidth, but there is also a need to place uh, processing resources close to where the end user is 
and that means using edge location, but using the right edge location that is uh, closest to the end user and that has all the available resources. So once again, using the Komari APIs, Deutsche Telekom, Orange, and Mitsuko demonstrated how uh, this can be done reliably and how the uh, holographic applications can use the API to uh, reserve the, uh, the quality and bandwidth that is required for this application. And you can see how it uh, dramatically improves the quality of this uh, holographic uh, communication. Another use case is uh, remote maintenance. This comes from um, the more uh, industrial side of things. Uh, not everything is uh, 3D entertainment. Uh, so in this case, um, there is a need to perform uh, maintenance for energy production equipment. Think of a uh, power generating turbine that needs to be maintained by a technician on the field, but uh, he needs to, he or she needs to be assisted by uh, someone in a remote location. So with the aid of uh, um, a HoloLens in this case as an XR uh, device, those technicians can get uh, all the remote assistance they can, uh, they, they need, but uh, in order to make that work reliably and provide the best experience to the operator, there is a need to make sure that net network latency and jitter are kept to a minimum. And again, this is done uh, once again by the uh, remote maintenance API, uh, remote maintenance application using the quality on demand API to uh, preserve that necessary low latency and low jitter communication channel for this application. Uh, these are some of the families of APIs that are available uh, by the Kamara project, and over time there will be uh, even more. Uh, you can see the quality and demand and edge uh, resource location APIs, but you can also see several of the other interesting families of APIs that could be leveraged for metaverse use cases. Uh, for example, the carrier building and uh, number verification that are maybe used for uh, creating scenarios of e-commerce in the metaverse while still tapping into uh, physical resources of the, of the user in the real world, such as their uh, mobile uh, billing account. So we, you can imagine that with these type of APIs, you can create E, uh, virtual e-commerce metaverse applications that are actually tied to the physical world and the physical uh, monetary resources of the end users. So um, uh, there is a large set of APIs that are available and they keep growing and addressing uh, the current and future needs of metaverse applications. Another open source initiative that is addressing the metaverse uh, networking and edge use cases is the Acrano open source project. Uh, so Acrano is an open source project that provides blueprints for architectures of edge devices that are addressing different use cases. Uh, as you can see here in this diagram, the Acrano project deals again with that continuum of remote edge close to the edge device or end user and more central locations all the way up to a central cloud and the use cases that are supported by the Ukraino blueprints are uh, are all over this uh, spectrum of uh, locations and uh, use cases of course metaverse use cases are becoming a, a big part of what the Ukraine project is dealing with and what the Ukraine project is starting to uh, provide solutions for. Here's one example of one of the blueprints that is provided by the Ukraine project. Uh, in this case, this is an edge computing infrastructure designed to support uh, AR or VR processing on edge locations. And as you can see, it starts with uh, a platform for running the actual AR VR applications, but it goes all the way down and provides all the necessary pieces of infrastructure, operating systems, connectivity uh, that are required to support these applications that can have high demand for uh, networking or processing power. So you can see that 
such a blueprint uh, takes into consideration things like hardware acceleration and how to most efficiently expose it to those applications and provide them with the optimal execution environment for, for these type of applications. So we talked about APIs and we mentioned edge computing, but of course everything has to work together. And just recently, uh, the communities of the Camara open source project and the Acreino open source uh, community uh, worked together and announced that they're joining forces to boost the API integration of edge computing, which uh, with uh, metaverse use cases, of course, being front and center for these type of integrations. So we not only have specific open source communities that are addressing the demands of the metaverse, but we're seeing uh, across industry and cross project collaboration that is designed to address the needs of, of these use cases and provide the necessary solutions. So to conclude, uh, it's important to remember that the metaverse will come in different shapes and sizes for multiple domains, multiple industries, multiple use cases. So we need to keep all of them in mind when we talk about the metaverse. Uh, it's also clear that network resources will have to be managed efficiently if you want to address the demand of the metaverse apps and that network APIs will be crucial to the success of the metaverse and to successful management of these network resources. And also it's obvious that network edge is where most of the heavy lifting of processing of metaverse applications will happen because the edge is kind of the sweet spot between the end devices that are constrained in resources and the, the cloud that may have all the resources but may be too far away from the end user. And of course, we need to remember that edge resources should be available for the dynamic consumption by the metaverse workloads. And again, those the APIs that that I mentioned will be a key uh, factor in, in the successful assignment of these resources to their metaverse applications. If you're interested in taking part in shaping the future of network and edge for the metaverse world, you are more than welcome to join our open source communities that are defining uh, these exciting technologies. So all the open source communities are uh, work in an open manner, which is open to the public. Everybody is welcome to participate, whether it's through uh, regular meetings and calls, whether it's through uh, mailing lists and uh, communication channels like Slack and Discord. Um, just to mention a few of the forums that are discussing the metaverse use cases and networking, uh, we have uh, the metaverse, uh, the Open Metaverse Foundation Networking Interest Group uh, that has regular meetings and an active Discord channel. We have the Linux Foundation Networking Technical Advisory Council um, that meets regularly and discusses um, uh, emerging technology challenges and how to address them. And Metaverse, of course, uh, is a big chunk of that. Uh, you may join this, uh, this forum as well. Uh, the Linux Foundation Edge Acrano project that I mentioned uh, is also open to participation by anyone. So you may follow this link and uh, find all the information about the relevant uh, work groups and mailing lists. And finally, the Kamara project is also an open source initiative uh, welcoming anybody who wants to learn and contribute. Uh, so you're welcome to follow this link and see all the different activities of this community. Uh, thank you very much for listening. I hope you learned something about the metaverse and I also hope to see you very soon collaborating in one of our open source projects. Thank you very much.